Yo, how's it going? Marlon King here. In this week's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Huawei Watch Fit. Now, I've had this for a few months now, so I feel as if I'm in a real good place to talk about it and give some feedback, both pros and cons of using it. Um, and what is it? Well, it's kind of a smartwatch that sits in between the fitness bands, the cheaper ones that are about 30, 40 pounds, and the more expensive smartwatches that are, you know, over 100 pounds. So I purchased this for about 80 pound. Um, however, currently I've seen it on sale for around 60 pound. I'll leave a link in the description. So let's talk about some of the key features of this watch. And the big one is of course that 1.64 inch AMO LED screen. Uh, I think this is great. It's about the perfect size for me at least. I find that those uh, fitness bands, the, the screen's just a tad too thin. Um, and also I don't like some of the smartwatches where they get too big. I'm not trying to make a showpiece of the watch. In actual fact, it's about similar size to some of those old Casio watches that I used to wear as a kid. So for that reason, I, I really like it. And I've got it in the color graphite black. However, there are a few other colors that you can get as well. The screen is 326 pixels per inch. And I must say, it actually looks really nice. I haven't had any problems with the resolution of the screen. Another good thing about this watch is that it's 21 grams. It's very light. And I must admit, I've, I leave it on pretty much all of the time and I don't notice it's there, which is great. Another key feature of this watch is the battery. And when I first got the watch, I was concerned about having to charge it every night the same way I have to do my phone, taking it on and off, what's the point? Because um, it's got some cool features like sleep tracking, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, the good news is I needn't have worried about the battery. Um, it lasts over a week every charge. And actually I got very close to two weeks on a single charge once, which was really nice. Um, it takes about one hour to do a complete charge. Um, however, you can charge it for five minutes and it will last you a whole day. So very good. Now, seeing as this is fitness orientated and one of the reasons I got it, um, it does have 96 workout modes and it has 44 animations showing you how to do some of those moves. Uh, it also has things like um, stress relief mode and breathing exercises. So um, lots of things built in. Now, I generally don't use those modes. I like to do my own weight training sessions and I'll go for walks and things like that. So um, it's just nice to be able to check my heart rate. So let's talk about some of the monitoring this has. It does have a constant heart rate monitoring, which is really good. Like one of the Samsung watches I tried in the past, you had to press a button to monitor it and then it did a one-off reading and that was it. This one here will be constantly tracking throughout the day so I can see fluctuations. It's also good if, you, if you're doing fitness and maybe you're doing HIIT training, you can monitor your heart rate and wait for it to get reach a point and then stop or, or lower it back down. So very good for that. It also does oxygen saturation level monitoring. However, it's a nice touch. It's one of the first devices to have implemented this and it's been a bit of a buzzword with um, COVID over the last year. Um, now, to test it, I mean, I'm generally around about 98%. However, I did have a cold a few weeks ago and I noticed it did drop down to 92%. So I feel as if it is giving me some indication, which is nice. It's just a, a nice to have, maybe not a compulsory, but it's nice to see it being included. Um, some of the other tracking it has is sleep monitoring. Um, and seeing as it's on your wrist, I mean, I know phones do it as well these days. It's, this is a lot more accurate and it has a nice um, app that gives a breakdown of your different levels of sleep and your sleep patterns. And also um, I've just recently had an upgrade to that app and it, it gives you points for your sleep. So overall, I've been very impressed with that. I'm generally a bad sleeper, so it's quite nice to wake up in the morning and kind of get confirmation I've had a good sleep. Almost makes me feel better about my day, even if I don't quite feel that way. Outside of sleep monitoring, it also has tracking of your cycles for the ladies, and it also has GPS. So if you're doing running or lots of walking, um, you can also see your routes that you've been doing and track that. So a lot of features packed into this relatively cheap smart watch. So that's all very well, but how does it work in the real world? And how have I got on over the last few months? Well, as I said, the battery life is really good. I've been impressed with that and I have no complaints. Screen 
has been very good, very bright, uh, nice resolution. Um, now, I will say with the screen, it has auto brightness. For most instances, it's fine. However, I have found on a very bright sunny day, it doesn't seem to go up to full brightness. And a couple of times I've had to go in and manually change to um, the highest brightness end of which I could then see the screen fine and the sunlight. Um, but for some reason that auto detect didn't quite raise it high enough. Um, now that's only been a couple of instances for pretty much everything else walking in and outdoors it's been fine monitoring wise um, again i've been very impressed nice to see my heart rate i've been using that quite a lot actually for my training if i'm doing weights and i, I can feel my heart rate going up i'll uh, wait for that to drop back down to a suitable level before doing my next set um, likewise if i'm doing boxing also it has stress monitoring which again <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily feel stressed out, but it's a nice thing to have. I've uh, a couple of times got off of a, a stressful call at work and I've looked down at my watch and seen there's been a big spike in that, that stress chart. So um, again, nice to see that it's actually working as expected. Sleep app is very impressive. It gives a breakdown of the three levels of sleep, shows you how much um, you've been getting deep sleep wise and the other levels. And overall, the app's been upgraded recently. It gives a points based system, so it rank your sleep. So what about the app? Now I'm not using a Huawei phone. I'm using a Samsung based on Android. Now Huawei are no longer on the Google app store. So although you can uh, download that app, it does mean that updates, you have to go via their website. However, that hasn't affected how the watch works or how the app works. Um, and I've only had to do one update fairly recently. Watch face wise, there are over a hundred faces available on the app. You can download lots to your phone and choose which ones you want. Some cost money, some are free. Lots of very colorful ones. And I mean, the display at the moment shows me that weather, battery, uh, distance I've walked, time, date, um, calories, heart rate, and the number of steps, that's all in one display. So very useful. However, what I have found is if you want something specific, like something that just looks like a normal watch, maybe something a little bit more elegant, like a dress watch, um, there are less um, faces that look like that, um, or they just look a little bit tacky, so I wouldn't really want to use them. The other type of watch face that I was looking for is like a very minimalist one. So there's, there's um, what you'd say your main watch face when you press the button, and there's also something that you can have like a standby watch face. Um, and what I was looking for is something like a, a just the time in a very small font that I could have displaying all of the time. But there didn't seem to be any watch faces that had the correct levels. Like I couldn't seem to find one that just had a standby um, small display. So there are room for improvement and apparently you can make your own watch faces so maybe that will come in the future but I couldn't quite find that at the moment and maybe it was there and I missed it because as I said there are actually lots of faces to choose from. So with the app how reliable has it been? Um, in general it's been perfectly fine. Um, what I found is so I put my my phone on sleep mode at nights um, just so there's no Wi-Fi, no 3G, nothing coming through that's going to affect my sleep. That's just a personal choice. But what I have found is when I turn that phone back on in the morning, it doesn't always connect to the watch. And sometimes I've, I've been a few days and, and then I've realized, oh, actually it hasn't connected to the app. You have to load up the app and then it connects and fine. It does resync the data. Um, so no problems there. However, I did have one instance where maybe it had been disconnected for so long and it might have actually been to do with like there's been an app update of recent, um, but either way, whatever happened, the, the watch didn't sync. I couldn't get it to reconnect and I had to turn the watch off and back on. And when I did that, I seem to have lost all of my data for the, the last four or five days. So I was a little bit gutted with that. However, that could have been my own fault because I do switch my, my phone on airplane mode. Maybe that wouldn't happen under normal circumstances. Um, but as I say, that's only happened once. And in general, if you just open up that app, it will resync anything. And if you don't need to reset the phone, 
uh, sorry, if you don't need to reset the watch, there shouldn't be any issues. So when it comes for walks and runs, I quite often find myself leaving the house and forgetting to start one of the workouts. Um, what I have found is actually after a few minutes, the, the watch will automatically detect that I'm going for a walk and offer me an option to start tracking. However, you do need to remember to, if you, you feel a little buzz, you do actually still need to press the start to encourage it to start um, tracking, otherwise it won't. Um, and if you do start a walk and you, you click it start, it, I find it sometimes takes 30 to 60 seconds for it to lock onto the GPS. It seems to be a little bit slower than I would expect. So if I just walk out the door and click start anyway, it might miss the first minute or so of my walk um, tracking the route. Uh, these are minor niggles and if you're doing prep work and you're aware of it and you remember to start, there shouldn't be any problems. That's just me. So smart features, um, not loads on here, but it's got um, a few nice ones like um, the weather app, um, which can be handy if you're going out and about and you want to quickly check the weather. Um, it also has find my phone. So um, the watch can make your phone beep, uh, which is nice. Um, with regards to notifications, I can choose what apps will ping a notification to my wrist. Um, with regards to messages, it will show me the text, however it won't show me any photos or videos or audio files that have been sent, let's say via WhatsApp or message, so it is just plain text. Um, but that's still useful to have. Personally, I found myself turning all of them off because the last thing I want is when I'm training to start getting bombarded with messages. So although I tried it out initially, I ended up turning them off. The other feature it has is um, music player and you should be able to skip tracks. However, I've had difficulty getting that to work. I mainly use Spotify, didn't seem to work with that at all. Um, and I don't have any other apps installed on my, my phone to work with it. Um, it may well work with Huawei Music Player if you've got a Huawei phone, but I didn't have that. So um, my experience with that is it's kind of been a bit null and void for me. However, what I will say is that wasn't a feature I was looking for. In general, the controls on my phone are fine when I'm in the house. And if I'm an out about and I'm, let's say, walking around and I've got uh, Bluetooth headphones in, then I've got the controls on them. So I don't really need to use my watch. And finally, with regards to those workouts, what's quite nice is if you're doing a freestyle training session like I generally do, it will give you little um, reminders like when you reach 10, 20 minutes, etc. So you know how long you've been training. And when you do click stop, you do have to tell it that you've finished your workout. It will give a breakdown of how many calories you've burned, the length of time you've been training, how many steps or the distance that you've done. Um, so all of that is very nice. However, I, m I must admit I have occasionally found that I've uh, forgot to stop it. And so an hour later, I might be eating dinner and realize it's still tracking my workout. When you are training, it is monitoring your heart rate. You can see it on the screen. And also within the app, you can determine at what rate your heart needs to be um, before it switches over to the different mode. So you can say, let's say below 100 beats per minute, um, you're doing warm up, And then once you reach 100, then you're considered fat burning and then so on and i think there's five different levels that you can configure within the app so it's very nice to have those customizations available to you <laughs> wow that was a lot to get through hope you appreciate me going into all the details of my experience with this watch if you did please give a thumbs up and also consider subscribing because i do other videos like this on consumer technology camera gear and also do the occasional vlog as well if that's of interest to you now pros and cons of this watch would I recommend it? Well, in short, yes, I would recommend it. And here's why. I think it's got a great screen. I think it's got great battery life. I think it's got great monitoring. And I think for the cost, you can't go wrong compared with other smartwatches that are almost double the price. So what are the cons of this watch? Well, the main one for me is having to download updates via the Huawei website is less than ideal for me. That said, it hasn't affected my overall performance and usage of this watch. Just, just felt less professional. And um, also that means that things like, you know, the music features didn't seem to work as well as I've liked. Um, when I've tried a Samsung smartwatch, it just works straight out of the box with Spotify. This one didn't for me. So it kind of feels almost half smart, let's call it. Um, the auto dimming, 
generally works. It could have been a little bit better, but maybe they'll get that right in future versions or with an update. I'd have also liked to have seen a few more watch faces um, like the minimalist ones that I mentioned. The only final thing I'll say is that I did have this overheat once on me when I was sunbathing, it was about 30 degrees. So, you know, after laying down for 20, 30 minutes in the sun, it did give a warning that it was about to shut down. Um, and when I saw that, I just took it off, put it in the shade just to save any more issues. Um, it's worked fine since then, so it's not caused any problems. But just a note to yourself, if you are out in the baking heat um, most of the day, that might be something that happens. Um, but I've only had that happen to me one, when sunbathing. I am in Britain, so the weather generally isn't that good. So I don't have anything to worry about. So yes, I highly recommend this watch for the price point. I think it's great. Um, if you're interested in buying it, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below that helps support this channel. Um, and whilst you're here, if you're interested in seeing an unboxing and setting up of a Samsung watch, I've got a video on that. And I've also reviewed um, the Anker Life P2 Bluetooth earbuds. So if you're interested in a nice cheap pair of Bluetooth earphones, definitely check that one out as well. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.